Okay, so in this lecture we are going to cover uh, connection on a manifold, the concept of connection on a manifold and then the se second topic that we are going is fundamental theorem of Riemannian geometry. Okay, so first we come towards the first topic and that is connection on a manifold. So, in a broader sense as we have discussed in the uh, previous videos that uh, we are interested in finding differentiation on a Riemannian manifold or in general on a manifold. So, let me say if this is some manifold M and this manifold is having a metric tensor G. So, we want to find some differentiation on this manifold which is intrinsic to the manifold and which does not depend upon the ambient space, which does not depend upon the Rn in which this manifold is actually embedded. We need to define everything or we need to formulate everything in terms of the intrinsic parameters of this manifold. So, we are interested in the intrinsic properties of the manifold which are not related with any ambient space. So, for example, if we consider a sphere, so this sphere can be embedded in R3, this can be embedded in R4, R5. So, there can be many ambient spaces, but we want to study this just the intrinsic properties of the sphere without any reference to these ambient spaces. So, we want to get rid of this ambient space and uh, uh, for that purpose we need to define certain things so that we can uh, study the intrinsic properties of the manifold. For example, one of the intrinsic properties of the manifold is curvature. So, intrinsic curvature. So, in order to study curvature, we need uh, to study it intrinsically without making any reference to the ambient space. So, for that we have to define certain things and with the help of those parameters uh, we will explore the intrinsic properties of the manifold. So, connection is a basic step towards uh, that progress. So, first of all we will define a connection that what is a connection. So, a connection or more broadly a C infinity connection is a mapping let me represent this with this symbol of del is a mapping del and this del is actually from vector field on manifold cross vector field on manifold to the vector field on manifold. Denoted by del which is actually which takes two vectors x and y and give us a single vector del x y. So, this is its notation basically for the connection such that or 
that it has these linearity properties with linearity properties so what are those linearity properties the first is it is r linear in both x and y and what are x and y they are actually vector fields they belong to the vector fields on the manifold they are lie in the tangent space so this means r linear in x and y means that uh, if we have this situation delta del alpha x plus beta y plus beta x prime say of y this is equal to del alpha x y plus del alpha x prime y so this is linearity in the x vector field and similarly this equation should also hold del x alpha y plus beta y prime this should become del x okay so i can further uh, extend this so how, how how can i do this uh, let me remove this let me delete this so that uh, okay so i can further uh, extend this formula and uh, this will become this alpha will get outside alpha del xy plus this one is beta so beta del x prime y so this means linearity in x and uh, linearity in y will become linearity in y will become so this will become alpha del xy plus beta del x y prime so this is linearity in y and what is the second property the second property is it is linear for c infinity functions in x so what does this mean this means del of f of x plus g x prime y is equal to f del x y plus g del x prime y where f is a function of uh, the coordinates so this is a continuous function but it is not uh, linear c infinity function for c infinity functions in y vector field now the second property uh, this was about linearity and uh, the third property is that that this should be del x f of y where f is some function this will become f del x y plus
del x f or x f multiplied by y or more generally I can write it also in this manner that if we have this equation f y g y prime. So, this will become f del x y plus g del x y prime plus x f multiplied by y vector field plus x g multiplied by y prime. So, this equation should hold. So, these uh, are the basic axioms which need to be satisfied by a connection on a manifold. So, if we have some manifold, uh, there will be, let me say, if I have some manifold. So, the vector field V m will actually lie in the tangent space. Here will be some vector field. in the tangent space of this manifold. This V m belongs to T m, tangent space of the manifold. So, the connection del will actually act on the vector field from this tangent space and it will give me another vector and along doing that it need to satisfy the about two uh, the about three axioms so it is actually from vm cross vm to vm and all these uh, properties need to be satisfied by the connection now there are two further properties and if they are satisfied, then we uh, call that connection a Riemannian connection. And what are those further uh, two properties? So, let me write the fourth property. So, uh, these are only satisfied by Riemannian uh, manifolds. Riemannian connections, not by a general. The definition of connection is limited in general case only to the above three properties, but for the Riemannian connections we need to satisfy further two properties. And the first of that is that the Lie bracket of x vector field and y vector field is that del x y plus minus del y x. So, this is actually minus. So, this becomes minus del y x. And the fifth property which needs to satis be satisfied is this x is some vector field and we apply it on this y z on the uh, inner product of y and z. So, for inner product I am going to use uh, this symbol. So, this will become del x y z plus x del y z. Okay, y is here, y del x z. So, if a, a connection satisfied this fourth and fifth property also along with the previous properties, then such a connection is referred to as a Riemannian connection.
we call that a Riemannian connection. Okay, so you can see that uh, for Riemannian connection, we need to have a metric tensor on the manifold. So, let me say if I have some manifold, if this is some manifold in general M, so we need to define a metric tensor because this inner product is related with metric tensor. And what is a metric tensor? Uh, it is represented by G and it is a positive definite symmetric matrix. Symmetric positive definite matrix. You should be familiar with the concept of metric tensor. I am assuming understanding of the metric tensor. So, you can write a metric tensor in this form. G is actually G i j and D x i tensor product with D x j. Now, so this G i j forms a positive definite symmetric matrix matrix and this need to be defined on the whole of the manifold. So, if you have some sphere, so then this Riemannian metric needs to be defined on the whole of the manifold. So, everywhere you should have G uh, and uh, G actually is a bilinear form it is it takes two vectors from the tangent space and give you a real number. So, you can say that it actually takes two vectors from the vector field and give you a linear number. So, it is a bilinear form bilinear form. So, once we have this uh, uh, Riemannian metric tensor or simply metric tensor on the manifold, then we can define uh, the inner product and uh, actually this G i j, this part of the metric tensor is given by the unit vectors. Let me say if the unit vectors are uh, this partial partial x i partial partial x j. So, then this g i j will be given by this. So, now we come towards the fundamental theorem. So, this is the concept of uh, connection. A connection is actually uh, has it has linearity properties, it is r linear in x and y it, and similarly it is c infinity functions linear in x argument only while for the uh, functions multiplied with y vector field the connection should satisfy the third equation. And similarly for Riemannian connections the connection must satisfy these five equations. So, these two extra equations are uh, need to be satisfied by a Riemannian connection. So, now we come towards the fundamental theorem of a Riemannian connection, Riemannian geometry. So, this is actually the fundamental theorem of Riemannian geometry. Riemannian geometry. 
ओके वट डज दिस थ्योरम सेज इट सेज दैट लेट सो आई राइट इट स्टेटमेंट स्टेटमेंट लेट एम बी अ रिमानियन मैनी फोल्ड then there is a uniquely determined riemannian connection on m okay so what does this mean okay this is quite simple statement this means that if we have some riemannian manifold and what is a riemannian manifold it is a smooth manifold m smooth manifold plus metric tensor or c infinity metric tensor so this gives us actually this c infinity means infinitely continuous and this gives me a riemannian manifold which means that if i have some uh, manifold and i also have a metric tensor for that manifold so then this m along with the metric tensor i call this a riemannian manifold and there is also a theorem in the theory of manifolds that every uh, smooth manifold has a riemannian metric every for every smooth manifold you can define a continuous or c infinity metric tensor so if you have a smooth manifold so that is automatically a riemannian manifold you just need to define a metric tensor on that so once you specify a metric tensor so then this is called a riemannian manifold now if we have a riemannian manifold which means a smooth manifold along with tensor then for this we will have a unique connection del xy so there will be a uniquely determined connection so we call that connection riemannian connection and now now as i have told you in the beginning that our purpose is to get rid of the ambient space in which we embedded the manifold and we want to study the intrinsic properties of the manifold and for that purpose uh, we need to focus only on the uh, parameters which are intrinsic to the manifold so this is the uh, this combination of m and metric tensor g will give me a uniquely determined uh, connection on the manifold so every smooth manifold has a metric tensor and once you specify metric tensor uh, so i can write it in this manner if i have a smooth manifold m and i give it g so it will become a riemannian manifold now everywhere i have g defined on this and then this combination will give me a unique riemannian connection 
So I need to prove this. So what is the proof of this? Okay, for proving this we need to use the axioms uh, that we have previously written for a Riemannian connection. The five axioms that we have previously discussed. So, with the help of those axioms we are going to prove uh, this theorem. Okay. So, let us start. Let us say we have a Riemannian manifold so M G and I take a vector field on this uh, manifold, two vector fields, one is x vector field, the other is y vector field. So, x is basically this vector field uh, B i x E i and the y vector field is this one A i x or A j x E j and these E i and E j are actually the basis vectors of the tangent uh, space. So, if at this point I have this tangent space, so E 1, E 2 etcetera these are actually the basis vectors of the tangent space. And as I am concerned with the intrinsic properties of the manifold, so this the vector field is also lying in this tangent space. So, for example, if this is a vector of this, uh, let me say y is here and uh, x is for example here. So, both of them are lying in the uh, tangent space and I can express them as a linear combination of the basis of the tangent space. These x, x 1, x 2, x 3, these are actually the coordinates here at the manifold and uh, as this is a manifold, so it will be diffeomorphic to some Euclidean space R n. Let me say it is n dimensional. So, I label the coordinates of this with u's, u 1, u 2 to u n and uh, similarly this will become partial partial u 1, the unit vectors are labeled in this manner, partial partial u 2 etcetera up to partial partial u n and there is a mapping from here to here. For example, if I consider this point, so this small page is small page of the manifold is actually diffeomorphic to R n and for this I have this map phi and say it is bringing it here and then there is an inverse map and that is actually phi inverse. And, uh, I also know that uh, this E 1 is actually the push forward of partial partial U 1 and in general E i is the push forward of the partial partial U i. So, Now, I need to uh, specify some uh, formulate some important things. 
and they are for example del e i e j and uh, this is equal to gamma k i j e k okay how i know this so for this you need to apply uh, the formula uh, of the covariant derivative we already know that covariant derivative is given by del x y 8 point p is actually del x p y and uh, this becomes equal to the general formula is like this x p a k and plus gamma k i j and uh, a i b j and e k will come here. So, in this case uh, this a will become because this e j can be expressed e j is equal to e j. So, the constant is 1 here and I will substitute it over here and hence its differentiation will become equal to 0. And uh, also a this is 1 and this is 1 and uh, this term in this situation in the case of this formula. one will come here. So, this term will give me 0 and this is 1, these two terms are 1. So, I will have this expression gamma k i j and then e k. So, this is an important expression. Now, I come, I am using the fourth property and uh, the fourth axiom of the Riemannian connection is this one. From the fourth axiom, I know that it is this actually x y should be equal to del x y minus del y x. Now, if I have this thing e i e j. So, its commutator or its Lie bracket is actually 0. So, you can verify this. This is a very simple exercise. So, I leave it as exercise for you. This thing is actually 0. So, now uh, E i E j will become equal to del E i E j minus del E j E i. And I know that this is 0. So, I can this will become equal to 0. And now, this implies this thing I know that this is actually gamma k i j and minus gamma k j i and uh, e k and this will become equal to 0. So, this implies again that gamma k i j is equal to gamma k j i.
So this is the an important property. Let me call this uh, equation three. Let me see. So this means that gamma or this crest of a symbol is actually symmetric in the i and j indices. It is symmetric in these two indices. Now, I use the fifth axiom and with the help of the fifth axiom, I am going to get another conclusion. So, I am using the fifth axiom by using 5. And what is that 5 axiom? That is actually this one. I am rewriting it here. That is, if you have some x vector field and then this y z inner product. So, this will become equal to del x y del x z z actually this will become z so this uh, and plus y del x z so now I will apply the this property specifically on the basis vectors of the tangent space, and uh, we will reach to we will get some result from this. Okay, so here in X I am taking E K and. Uh, here I am taking E i E j. Now, for Riemannian manifolds, this thing will become equal to. So, uh, from the above property, this will become del E k E i E j plus del E i del E k E j. So, now I know that E k this thing this is the inner product of two basis vectors in the tangent space of the manifold. So, this will give me g i j. So, e k g i j will become equal to now this thing del e k uh, e i this will give me gamma k gamma so, k i will come here and let me take l here e l will come e j and plus e i and this will give me gamma k j m and uh, let me see or I can also use l. E L will come here. So, from here I obtain okay, so this inner product is bilinear. So, this is a constant gamma L K I. I can take it outside. So, gamma L K I 
and the inner product of EL and EJ will give me GLJ and plus gamma LK I can come out it will come outside this will become GIL so this is an important relation that we have obtained okay so now this uh, G metric tensor this is a symmetric positive definite matrix so definitely it will have inverse and uh, if it has inverse then I uh, can represent the elements of the inverse of the metric matrix uh, metric tensor with G superscripts. So, G i j is actually the inverse of uh, this lower script G i j and this when done this will give me del i j. Now, from very basic tensor analysis we know that I can lower and raise the indices. So, let me say if I have this uh, tensor let me say if I have this symbol k l k gamma l k i and I multiply with this g uh, j l. So, the result of this will become because this is both in the superscript and subscript l is both up and down. So, it will vanish when we complete the summation and I will get gamma k i j. So, I can use this trick to lower or raise the index. Even I can raise the index in this manner. If I have for example, gamma k i j. So, and I write it like this g j l. So, I will obtain from here gamma k i and l will come to the superscript. So, we can lower and raise the indices uh, in the theory of tensor analysis. So, using this concept we can get some more relations And we also know that this uh, Christoffel symbol is symmetric in the first two indices. So, I can write it uh, in this manner. Let me write it in this manner. Uh, if I have gamma k i j, so then this is equal to gamma k j i i k j. So, it is symmetric in the first two indices, not in the last two. So, I can write this in this manner also. Okay. So, now if I call this equation 4, so what does this equation mean? This means that uh, E k g i j is equal to uh, and I apply this concept of raising and lowering the indices. 
So, this will become equal to gamma k i j and plus gamma ok. So, this is actually j gamma k j i gamma k j i. Now, this E k is actually uh, the basis vector of the tangent space. So, E k is actually this thing partial partial x k. So, this will become partial g i j partial x k this will become g k i j plus gamma k j i call this equation 5. Okay. So, this is a very important result that uh, we have obtained from the exam 5 and we applied actually the exam 5 to the uh, basis vectors of the tangent space. Now, I can uh, play with the indices I can uh, and I can have some more equations. So, if I uh, rotate the indices in a circular fashion or do the permutation in a circular fashion, so what I will obtain? So, this uh, will become gamma k i j. So, this will become gamma j k i plus and this one will become gamma i k j. And now, this term according to the above equation will become equal to Okay, so maybe we are having some mistake in i and j. So, I am having here gamma k i j k j i. Let me check if I am correct from here. So, here we have gamma l k i that is correct. Let me highlight this. So, this one is ok and uh, then we have this one and uh, that is uh, gamma k j actually and that is also correct. And this one will give me g i l this will give me ok. It's ok. So, gamma k i j gamma k j i. I think it is ok. So, then this equation is correct. This is all right. So, no problem in this. And uh, once I do the permutation, so I am having ok. So, what is the relation between these indices and these indices? Okay, 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 okay. So I need to uh, switch these two indices. Whatever I have here, so they are switched over here, and the first is same. So the same we do here, because this is the equation that we have derived. So now we will look, we will examine this equation and set the indices accordingly. So here. I should follow the first one and uh, set the indices accordingly. So, what is here? J should be as it is and if it is k i here, then it will become i k here and this will become partial g i k and partial x j. Let me call this equation 6. Again, I do this uh, permutation of the indices and uh, this will become i j k 
and here it will become the first one will be as it is and the last two will be switched and then this will become partial g partial x i you have to take the derivative with respect to the first index. So, this will and we have j k here. Remember that g i j because it is a symmetric matrix, so it is same as g j i and the Christoffel symbol is actually symmetric only in the first index. So, now if I add the first two equations and then I subtract the last one from them. So, what I obtain? I am doing this operation 5 equation 5 plus equation 6 minus equation 7. So, actually I will obtain this thing. And uh, I will have here gamma k i j plus gamma k j i gamma j k i plus gamma j i k then minus gamma i j k minus gamma i k j. Okay. So, uh, the first two indices are uh, they can be switched because it is uh, Christoffel symbol is actually symmetric in this. So, I can do some cancellation over here gamma minus gamma i j k will go with this one plus gamma j i k because they are same minus i gamma i k j will go with this and we will remain only with these two indices. And now, these two are actually same k j i is same as j k i. So, I will obtain from here this equation. Gamma j k i is actually 1 by 2 and partial g i j partial x k plus partial g i k partial x j and minus partial g j k partial x i. So, this is the uh, expression for the Christoffel symbol. And let me call this equation 8. So, you can see that you have to uh, this uh, for remembering this it is uh, convenient to remember that you the one appearing with minus symbol is actually the last index. So, it is i over here. So, I need to uh, this differentiation is actually with minus symbol and the remaining j and k are with plus symbol. Just for remembering purpose and there is nothing more to it. Okay. So, this is the expression for the Christoffel symbol. If I am interested in uh, writing things in this manner, for example, if I want to write it in this manner, gamma such that one index is the in the superscript. Let me say if I am interested in this, I should have gamma i 
jk so actually i can obtain it from gamma jki so i will take gamma jki and i will multiply it with g let me say if i replace this with l let me call this index just for representation purpose call this s gamma s j k so then this will become g i s so i can lower and raise the index according to the rules of tensor analysis so in that case gamma s j k will become One by two, G I S, and uh, then this whole thing will be multiplied with this partial G I J, partial X K, and uh, plus partial G I K. Partial x a minus partial g j k partial x i. So this means that equation eight means that uh, I can obtain the Christoffel symbol just by using the Riemannian tensor. So if I have some Riemannian manifold, M and there is G defined everywhere on this manifold, on the whole of the manifold and we know that if a manifold is a smooth manifold, then we can define a metric tensor everywhere on that uh, manifold. So this just by using the G, the metric tensor, which is intrinsic to the manifold, I can get the Christoffel symbols, gamma k i j. And then once I have these, so then I can have del x y. Because now del x y is very simple. So, I can write in, it in this manner that let me say if I have some point over here P and at this point there is a vector field, uh, there are two vector fields on this manifold X and Y. We say and there is another vector field is this one. So this one is x and this one is y. And I am interested to find the covariant derivative of y with respect to x at point P, which means I am interested in this del x of y at point P. So, this will become equal to del x P y and uh, I can write the equation in this manner. The local coordinates on this manifold are actually x 1 up to x n. So, this will become B j I have already written expression for x and y in the beginning that we have this vector field. So, x has b i as components with each basis vector and uh, y has a j. So, this will become expression that I will get is this. So, 
so I write it here. BK or let me say BJ and uh, partial AI partial XJ gamma K IJ and then AI BJ and then with this summation there will be EK and then this gamma K IJ is given by where gamma K IJ is given by 1 by 2 and G K S and gamma I J and S. So this will become one by two K S and then this will become partial G. So with respect to first two there will be positive symbol. Okay, what is remaining here? J S and what is remaining here? I S and here it is I J. So, we have this expression for gamma K I J. Now, what let me summarize this. I have uh, replaced I have found this uh, gamma K I J from the metric tensor. So, I have obtained this from the metric tensor and then I will substitute it here and from here uh, I will find the covariant derivative or the connection del x y is actually the connection. So, that means that uh, I do not need to go to the ambient space. There is no reference to the ambient space in this whole equation. There is nothing left in this equation which compels us to go to the ambient space. So, that is the beauty of this equation and we have found a connection on a Riemannian manifold just with the help of metric tensors. So, if a Riemannian, if a metric tensor is given on a Riemannian manifold, I can get a uniquely determined connection on M and hence that is the uh, end of this proof QED. So, that is the beauty of this equation lies in this fact that there is nothing left uh, which needs us to go to the ambient space because these uh, Tangent unit vectors are intrinsic to the manifold because when I am making uh, locally the manifold diffeomorphic to Euclidean space. So, the push forward of the unit vectors of the Euclidean space is actually the tangent vectors. So, these are intrinsic and uh, this part Previously, we were compelled by this part to go to the ambient space, but now uh, I can find this also from here and uh, these components are available from the vector field. So, this is the beauty of this equation and remember uh, this equation works in both cases. It works in the presence of ambient space also. So, for example, if there is ambient space in which we have embedded our manifold, then these uh, metric tensors, this, this part, these metric tensor part, this indices, uh, this tensor will be coming from the 
induced metric tensor on the manifold. So, actually in the case of ambient space, uh, if we have some manifold for example, uh, let me say if we have some manifold. So, and there is also for example, R 3 ambient space, then any basis vector of the tangent space can be expressed as a linear combination of for example, E 1 can be expressed as a linear combination of the basis vectors of R 3. So, then this R 3 has inner product, there is inner product uh, on R 3. So, we can use that inner product to get inner product on the this tangent space and hence on the whole manifold. So, it works in both cases. In the case of embedded in some uh, ambient space, we can uh, the metric tensor is induced from the ambient space, but uh, if we do not have any ambient space and we have just the manifold, so still this equation works and that is the actual value of this equation. Okay, so, we stop here.